A great deal has been accomplished in healthcare in my lifetime. As a young boy over a half a century ago, watching my father practice medicine in an office attached to the house, both he and his patients held great hope for the future. So much was unknown, including the causes of acute and chronic diseases, from heart attacks to bleeding ulcers, and all eyes were focused on science as savior. Now, as I hit 60 years old, we're facing a very odd reversal, with the general acknowledgement that human behavior has been unable to keep pace with scientific understanding. When it first became obvious that we as a population were not seizing the opportunities for health that were right in front of our noses, like not smoking or staying on medication for high blood pressure to avoid stroke or maintaining healthy weights and exercise to avoid diabetes, economists felt, well, maybe more information and mild financial incentives would do the trick. When that didn't work, a subgroup of economists who had formed a new field called behavioral economics, the marriage of conventional economics and psychology, became more vocal. Behavioral economists say that we're difficult to motivate, not because we're bad people or terminally obstinate, but because our brains are programmed in such a way that we're biased to make bad decisions. For example, we prefer to stay put rather than change. So our minds presented with a change option will overweight the value of the status quo and underweight the advantages of what's new. A second human tendency is to overweight the here and now and underweight the future. This impacts our interpretation of relative risks and benefits. For example, we overvalue the benefits of satisfying our appetite now and undervalue the danger of obesity later. In so doing, we inadvertently support an increased burden of certain diseases like hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even some cancers. In reverse, we often overweight a present-day inconvenience or risk like the discomfort of a bowel prep for colonoscopy and underweight the benefit of a future free of colon cancer. Such procrastination sets us up for disaster. Finally, our human nature showed distinct preferences for things measurable. We're quite conscious of the measurable minutes necessary to stop and take medications as prescribed, but far less conscious of the less measurable avoidance of future disease. Minutes necessary to stop and take statins makes a greater impression on us than the fuzzy notion of avoidance of formation of theoretical future coronary artery plaques. Dr. George Lowenstein and his colleagues from Carnegie Mellon University's Social and Decision Sciences Center says that most of us, quote, are likely to adhere to the path of least resistance, doing what is automatic or what they have done in the past because of present-day biased preferences and intangibility, informing patients about delayed consequences of their behavior is unlikely to have much effect because the costs of adhering to recommendations are often immediate and thus heavily weighed, whereas the benefits are often remote in time and amorphous." Close quotes. The solution? Well, experts say design the systems to play to our preferences. Examples? Set up food in the cafeterias so that items that are most nutritionally sound appear first. Or how about amending unhealthy status quo options? For example, fast food combo meals currently have a large soda as their opt-out option for individuals making the combo choice. It's presumed that if you order a combo meal that you will get a large soda. If you would prefer water and speak up, they'll substitute. Well, what if water was the first option and the large soda was the substitute? This flip would positively impact consumers because the unhealthy option would have to be requested. And how about automatic rescheduling for screening exams like colonoscopy or mammography, advantaging the here and now rather than relying on action in the fuzzy future? Behavioral economists believe that institutions and incentives should be structured and aligned in such a way to maximize the likelihood that individuals will engage in behaviors that are beneficial. To me, that makes a great deal of sense. For Health Commentary, I'm Mike McGee.